Hey guys, so the 1990s were an interesting, exciting, fun time for martial arts. There was still a sort of mystique about them. This was pre-MMA before that ever blew up. Really, the only way you can see a martial artist was in the movies, and we really only had two that kind of broke out mainstream. So in the action cinema martial arts subgenre, of course, I'm talking about Jean-Claude Van Damme and Steven Seagal. But in today's video, I want to break down five other guys who had a real shot of vying for a spot next to them. Now, they were all in movies that did go to the theater, and I consider movies that went to the theaters in the 90s as real movies. They had good production values, good story, real directors. Uh, solid co-stars actually knew how to act like James Earl Jones and Lance Henriksen, for example. So anyway, sit back, and I hope you enjoy this top five list, and let me know who your favorite is, of course. So number five on the list is Thomas Ian Griffith. As far as his martial arts style and background goes, he holds black belts in Taekwondo and Kenpo Karate. On a side note, I do as well, so I might be biased towards his style. The Taekwondo is clearly evident in the film Excessive Force with this beautiful jumping sidekick here and this axe kick here. As far as his stature goes, he stands 6 foot 4 tall, so he's right up there height-wise with Steven Seagal, though he's got a much more slender physique. He's also known for his long dark hair like Seagal. But he's got these cold blue eyes, which makes him look really unique. You could say he looks like a soap star, which, funny enough, he had a role in the soap opera Another World between 1984 and 1986, so he kind of looks more like a pretty boy than a tough guy, but that would certainly help him towards building a female audience. Soap opera aside, he really got his start in playing Terry Silver, one of the villains in The Karate Kid 3 in 1989. The really cool part about this, by the way, is that there are rumors he'll be reprising this role in Season 3 of Cobra Kai. If you guys are a fan of the Karate Kid series, you have to check it out, which I'm sure if you're a fan of those films, you probably already have. I myself absolutely love Seasons 1 and 2 and can't wait for Season 3. So Thomas Ian Griffith's role in Karate Kid 3 really put him on the map, and in 1992 he came out with Ulterior Motives, which had a straight-to-video release. Now I want to bring that film up because it used the tagline, You've seen Seagull, Van Damme, and Norris. Now, meet the new contender. Although that film went straight to video, he had a legitimate shot of going mainstream the following year with his lead role in 1993's Excessive Force, a film that really tried to make him a legitimate contender to the likes of Steven Seagal and Jean-Claude Van Damme. Interesting side note, he not only starred in this film, but also wrote it. He also had the benefit of working alongside some really solid co-stars such as James Earl Jones, Lance Henriksen, and even Burt Young, which you probably all know as Rocky's alcoholic brother-in-law in the Rocky series. Now, as far as the success of Excessive Force, we got to put it in perspective with the equivalent Van Damme and Seagull films at the time. So, for newcomer Thomas Ian Griffith, Excessive Force would have a box office take of only $1.1 million domestically, which is not exactly breaking the bank. In fact, it didn't even make the $3 million that went missing in the raid by a group of Chicago cops in the actual film. So, what was Jean-Claude Van Damme doing in 1993? He was working with none other than Hong Kong director John Woo, who made his American film directing debut with Hard Target, which grossed an impressive $32 million domestically. Oh, and funny enough, this film also had Lance Henriksen. Played an amazing villain. And then Steven Skull at the time, one year later in 94, had Under Siege, which grossed a staggering $85 million. So why do I bring up these numbers? Well, it shows you what Ian was up against. While I as an audience member and fan don't really care how much a movie makes, the studios producing them certainly do since it can be considered a gauge of how big a star actually is. Basically, you gotta be able to put asses in seats. Which unfortunately Ian was not able to do in this movie, and the follow-ups in the following years, such as Cracker Jack, Blood of the Innocent, and Hollow Point, never really got him the audience that I thought he deserved. But anyway, let me know in the comments section what you think about Thomas Ian Griffith, and are you excited about Cobra Kai Season 3? In part two of this five-part series, I'll be covering Philip Rhee at number four, so please subscribe if you haven't already, and stay tuned. That video is coming very shortly.